Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Thursday, January 18th, 2024. And this is my first video of the year. And in today's video, all I'm really going to be doing is putting on these cooling lines for the transmission oil onto the transmission and onto the pan of the engine. But before we just jump right into this video, I'd like you guys to go to my Patreon. I have a direct link to a video that I just uploaded to Patreon. It'll explain in detail how, why it's taking me this long to come up with this video. You know, it's been a month, basically. And all I'm doing is putting on these cooling lines right now. Uh, a couple of small other things as well. So watch the video. There's some detail there uh, that I think it's, 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 it's a well-produced video, I believe. I believe it's a well-produced video. The video on Patreon is, you know, other stuff that's not related to the 560 SL. I want to keep this to the 560 SL. This channel specializes in the 560 SL. Okay, that's, that's what I own. That's what I've completely taken apart. Every single nut and bolt of this vehicle, I have taken apart. I have not dismantled any body elements, but everything mechanically has been completely taken apart and put back together. Yes, the differential, completely taken apart. I mean, I could go on and on and on, right? So I wanna keep this YouTube channel dedicated to that, to see what else is going on in my life and things like that. That's what Patreon's all about. There's no cost, there's no fees. I don't even have a membership there. I did, I wanna thank Tim for subscribing. They kind of get you, Patreon kind of gets you in there and then they want you to put in these tiers and all that. And they said, I ah, just do it because people want to give you money. It's true, people do want to give you money, um, but I don't want to do this on a monthly thing. Come on, you know, you guys might see a video you like, you're inspired on that video. I might've helped you fix something, you know? So you want to say, hey man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this guy 50 bucks or hundred bucks or whatever. Well, that's exactly, you know, what you could do. You could do that using my PayPal link, okay? I don't want to have this monthly stuff. I don't want to manage that. I, it's, that's not, I, this channel's not about making money and my Patreon's not about making money. It's just being transparent. You know, that's what it's really all about. I'm showing you everything that I can and I'm sharing that experience with you on YouTube and then some things that I'm not sharing on YouTube, I'm also sharing on the Patreon for right now. So, all right, let's just get into this video. Now, some of you who's been following me, if this is not your first rodeo with me, you notice I'm sporting a beard. The reason for the beard is to say howdy to Pierre. You know, I figure if he can grow one, I can grow one. No, nah, that's not true. Uh, almost every year at this time, I, I just don't shave. But probably in the next video, I'll be back shaving again, okay? But I won't be cutting any of this stuff off, all right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's just get this video going. I want to thank you guys, you know, for uh, contributing to the channel. Uh, the best way, of course, is to subscribe, share, tell your friends about it. Uh, you know, anything to do with the R107, I think you're going you're gonna to gain something from this channel. So let's just get going. I, I'm already talking too much. In my last video, I joined the transmission to the engine. But there's more that we can do. As a matter of fact, I want to do as much as possible outside of the engine compartment as possible. I want to connect all those lines. You know, we have the oil lines that run up to the radiator and then they run on the sides of your transmission there. You put this together, it kind of sits like that and you got those banjo lines. I think that's what they call them. The connection is a banjo because it looks like a banjo, but those lines are aluminum type lines that just go along each side and there's two bolts, little M6 bolts, the same pan bolts that you use with this little spring washer, it's the same thing. And there's two on each side that connect to the pan and then it also connects here this here is the passenger side or right hand side. Your one side of that banjo connection will fit right there. And that other one right there is for the dipstick. And then on the left side of the transmission, you have your other line. And then, like I said, those lines just run up, right? So they run up and they go up to the radiator. 
So the one on the right right there has two clamps, and that's these clamps right here. There's the part number for that. And then that line will go up, but you see, first, we have the left side now. That's on the left side, all right? So that's just a nut, basically, that threads onto that opening there. It's a compression fitting. So that, that line right there will go all the way up and go to the very top and go right there. And that's where another banjo connection would be. And that's what brings me to these two pieces right here. You'll see there's a longer one and a shorter one. The shorter one is the one that goes there, right there at the top of your radiator. When my transmission was rebuilt, uh, Mark over there at Mercedes Transmissions gave me all new washers for that. You need a total of six of these, and there's the part number for that. This is just the spring washer, and then you have your pan bolt. Now, the reason I talk about this pan bolt is right there, that bolt to hold down the dipstick for the transmission is exactly the same bolt that you use on your pan. So that's just the same part number and same thing with the spring washer. And then you have your O-ring that'll go on that dipstick as well. To tighten these down, I think you can get by with 19 millimeter socket. And then to tighten this here, you're gonna need a five millimeter hex. And you'll notice I have a torque wrench here because there's no torque settings for anything except for the pan bolts. And the manual says 10 Newton meters or 11 Newton meters actually. Um, I did mine at 10 and I will continue that by doing these at 10 as well. This, as well as the four that are on the tubes that run on each side. There's a couple of things still yet I wanted to talk about, and that is these little grommets. Um, here's the part number right here for that, but you're gonna need four of them. Mine were completely missing, and if it wasn't for my buddy Blake out there, uh, he reminded me to get these, and so, yeah, sure enough, I looked them up and I found these. I want you to notice the different lengths of these screws here. This is 18 millimeters from here, you know, from the shoulder down. And all the pan bolts, which is what this one is, which I've already discussed earlier, they're 15 millimeter. You know, when you look to go to purchase these, it just shows, you know, there's 20 of these. It doesn't show these as a separate part number, but, and I look at another place with the transmission lines and they show this, but unfortunately they don't provide me with a part number. Just so you know, it's 18 millimeter. So you can just go ahead and buy one, buy a stainless steel one or something, right? So that's important. Uh, these things are just split and they'll just fit right inside there no problem, uh, right inside the clip, and then we'll, we'll close it back up. Now, since mine were missing, it's a chance that whoever put this on might have actually taken, taken these clips off at one point. I had a question about the orientation of these uh, in, in this first place we're gonna go look at next. All right, so I'm on the left-hand side or driver's side and this is where the transmission is and the engine. And this is where the banjo fitting is. There's a little red thing here. This is where this would go. And I'm just dry fitting this. And you can see this will go along here and come up. And it's the same thing on the other side, actually. But it comes up and then goes around. So then it comes like this and then on down. And then you can see right here, it's got this hole. And you see the orientation of my clip so they had this up like this, and when you do, this is why I dry fit the AC compressor. I just dry fit it up there. You can see it's loose, just have it on one bolt. But this is why they were missing the bolts, because they had this up like that, and so you couldn't even get a bolt on it. So Blake, a buddy of mine, who's a part of this channel as well, he showed me his, and his is actually turned the other way. So that way there, your, 
your bar here comes down farther. They bent this thing. I already know that this there's it's not exactly the way it should be. So, but anyway, I need to go ahead and get the plastic clip or that rubber clip on here, turn this thing around and get this orientated so I can go ahead and get this attached here as well as over up here and that the banjo. See, I can see that there was a wear mark here as if this is where it was. So, you know, they had it here, but I believe when you have this down farther, it'll be right here. That's why it was rubbing and why it didn't fit. It was just like that, you guys, right, right over that hole, basically. And this is why they didn't have any bolts in the bottoms of these, just in the two top. I'm going to use the crush washers that was given to me with the transmission from Sun Valley. First, I got to take this out. Don't want to contaminate anything here. There's paint. See the paint? I don't recommend these things get painted. Let me get a rag and just, just wipe this outside, make sure it's good and clean. My, my recommendation is not to paint these things up because these caps, what ends up happening is right behind it, it just fills up behind it. This took quite a while to clean. You can tell it was just, it's just covered with paint. I mean, this is, I use several of these and a rag and everything before I could get all that paint up because it dripped down behind the cap and the actual block of the transmission here. But now we're ready. All right, let's go ahead and get this assembled here. Now I don't have it tight back there because I wanted to make sure I can get this to go on there properly. I can always do those later. 19 millimeters, as you know. Now I'm not gonna fully tighten it yet. And I did that so that way there I can work on the other parts first. This one here is still attached. It's just hand tightened. So now we can make sure it fits over on this other one. Oh yeah, look how much better that is. Right there. Already better than it was. All right, so I've got it in there and I've kind of cranked it. I, I went ahead and I took the AC compressor out, but put the bolts in just so you can see. There's a lot more clearance now. So I just wanted the room to be able to tighten this up. There we go. Okay, now I've moved myself onto this one here. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to finish this heart. I'm not going to fully tighten this down. I want to, I just want to snug it up. And the reason for that is, let's say I bump it or something like that. When I go to install all this, I don't want to disturb the connection. This way here, if I bump it while installing the transmission and I have not yet tightened this down, there's still crush available where I can crush those washers like they're supposed to be done. Uh, you'll notice this has got a yellow marking on there. That's L for left, and you see that's R for right. And I just, I'm very anal, and I kept everything exactly as it came apart. Now that I've gotten this on here, I'm going to wipe that off. All right, like I said, just a slight snug, you know, just so it doesn't leak, right? Something like that. That's all it really needs, just to, just to make sure it's snugged up. And then, to remind me later, you guys know, and I know, and we have video of it, but I'm going to mark that with a white. And that'll tell me that still needs to be torqued down. I'm going to mark this one with the yellow. There we go. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Perfect. I want to point out this drain hole right here. This actually comes from the top. 
not, has nothing to do with the transmission or the rear seal or any of that type of stuff. So if you see oil coming down here, which it often will do, you can see it's slightly stained here, it's coming from the top. It could either, you know, from underneath the intake manifold, you know, that cavity that's in there. And if oil gets in there or water or anything gets in there, it's supposed to drain here. So you wanna make sure these are clear. All right, mine is clear, obviously, because I completely dismantled the engine. I made sure everything is clear. But sometimes these things get clogged. So, you know, run a piece of wire up through there, whatever you gotta do, make sure it's clean, and you'll be good to go. I'm starting to not feel very good for some reason, guys. Uh, I don't know what to say, but anyway, there you go. There's that one. There's that one. I got some bad shadows because of the lighting. And then there's that one. Just as a reminder of where this particular one is, if you count all the bolts, including the big actual bolts, one, two, three, four. That's where this one is, four. And then there's not another one until you get up to that point there. That's the left side or driver's side. That's the orientation from what I understand is how it should be done and the orientation of those clamps. Now before I take a break, let's talk about this. This is this, this is just a cover plate that fits in here just like that. What this is for an inspection area and also so you can put your locking tool in here like that. Then you can tighten your Pulley, for example, whatever. If you gotta lock it up, that's what this is for. So I will obviously still be locking this up because I have not torqued down that front pulley. But I wanna put my cover on here without you know, tightening it at this point. But I wanna get the cover on just so it's all ready to go. And I wanna do this so this whole side is complete. And I wanna get this done before I take a break, I'm not feeling very well. I feel like I'm starting to get a fever or something. So I really wanna get this side done, so at least it's done. You can see how this has a lip all the way around it. That little indentation will, will go on the inside of that. It's self-explanatory, just like that. Same thing, five millimeter M6. These are very, very, very short, as you can tell. Like I said, I'm not going to crank on it or anything. I'm just gonna snug it. It'll be fine. Again, I will mark these white. Of course, I'm not gonna forget because I have to take it off anyways. Well, that break was a little bit longer than I thought. If you haven't already, you can go to my Patreon. I uploaded a video which explains why I've been gone for so long. So let's continue. So we have the left oil cooler line. And I thought before I just jump over to the right hand side is that I'll address this part. This is looking from the engine side, from the oil pan looking back towards the transmission. And there's a cover there. And this cover is this cover right here. And here's the part number for the cover and the part number for those bolts. Uh, I believe the bolts will come with the washer. There's no specifications on the torque of this. It's, but uh, you know, this is an M6. Uh, by the way, they're 12 millimeters long. If we look at our chart, we can see that an M6, these are 8.8, .8, then it would be torqued to 9.9 .9 Newton meters max. So I'm gonna set mine to say nine and a half Newton meters. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take this over and install it because there's really no room for video. So that's what it looks like when it's all installed. Well, let's move on to the oil cooler line on the right side. That's that big long one that goes all the way to the top, you know, with those two brackets there in the front and then that flex line, and then it comes over to the right hand side and you can see how it's bent. It'll, it'll follow the curvature of the block there 
fit right along there like that. And then it goes right in here, right next to your air pump and that dipstick, right, for your oil dipstick. And then it goes through there. And I took the liberty of taking off the oil filter so you can see. Um, you can put this on even if you have an oil filter on, if you're doing it from under the car. But this is really tight. It's hard to get any of this area. But yeah, I've already put in the new uh, grommets here and I've torqued it down, as a matter of fact. If you notice the, where it is, this first one here from the front, here's the front. The first one is just underneath your sensor here. And then it carries on, and notice where this is. It's where this first dimple is. That's actually the first one of the shorter bolts. But remember, these are those 18 millimeter long because of the extra strapping and everything that you've got here. But that curve now, you see how it follows the this? I mean, yours could be bent up, right? So I'm just showing you how this one here actually works. And it continues on. This too has a lot of paint. Look at, see? I don't know if you probably can't see those flakes. I'm not a fan of painting. As a matter of fact, you know, if you did brake clean by this or anything, now it's going to streak, right, all over the place when you clean it with any kind of a solvent, for sure. So you want to stay away from solvents at this point. Look at that, see? You can see how big that is. I mean, I'm, this is just a recommendation. You know, you, you guys, like I said, they'll do what you tell them. So send them the transmission, say, please don't don't paint it, right? Unless you want them to. If you're gonna paint it, you have to at least, you have to paint it properly. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with me, huh? That's what the thumbs up's about. I still gotta clean the inside. I'm just trying to get most of the outside done. And I have some Q-tips where I'll get that little bit that's down in there. You probably can't see it, but I see it. I'm wearing goggles, magnifying goggles. But you know, this is just, it's super contaminated. So I have cleaned it all up and I'm ready to install that nut. You'll have the, the one washer and then the other one will go on the other side, just like we did before. And we'll try to line it up. And again, I'm not going to tighten it. I'm going to snug it up. just so it won't leak, but we will tighten it later. I'll mark it with the white, just like I did the other side. That's a reminder that it's not yet torqued. This here is for the dipstick for the transmission level. That's for the nut. I verify that this can be put on after this. Matter of fact, that's how I did it when I took it apart. This was the first thing I took off. Um, I'm going to leave this off because it could interfere with the installation. So it's really easy anyways, you just drop it on down. And then it just comes up to that bracket right here, which I have not tightened down. But this could hit the firewall or something when I install it. So I'm not going to install it. So there's a right side transmission oil cooler line, all installed. And this is the rest of it here in the front. And you can see over here by the air pump and the air uh, oil filter and everything, it's gonna be very difficult to try to do this under the car. Uh, lucky for me, I get to do it on the outside. So at least now you know where everything goes. We're all in the same boat. You know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here. That way there, you know, I get something posted up on YouTube. It's been a long time, you know, I don't know if you get penalized, you know, I know traffic is down obviously. So I wanna pick this thing back up and try to get some short videos. I think I can produce some little ones um, and, you know, just kind of keep 
going towards our goal, which of course is to start this engine for the first time since 2008, you guys. So I hope you would support me and uh, subscribe and give me a thumbs up, you know, whenever you feel appropriate. So I think that's it. Like I said, thanks again for watching.